திரு எம் கே ஸ்டாலின் அவர்களே மாண்புமிகு தமிழ்நாடு நிறுவனத்துறை அமைச்சர் திரு துரைமுருகன் அவர்களே தமிழ்நாடு அரசின் தலைமை செயலாளர் முனைவர் இறை அன்பு அவர்களே மாண்புமிகு அமைச்சர் பெருமக்களே சட்டமன்ற உறுப்பினர்களே சிறப்பு விருந்தினர்களே உத பிரமுக்கர்களே அன்புள்ள சகோதர சகோதரிகளே தமிழ்நாட்டின் முன்னாள் முதலை அமைச்சர் மறைந்த டாக்டர் கலைஞர் கருணாநிதியின் தொண்ணூத்த எட்டாவது பிறந்த நாள் விளைவு முன்னிட்டு திருவருவ சிலையை திறந்து வைக்க உங்கள் அனைவரின் முன்னால் முறுப்பதில் பெகிழ்ச்சி பெருமகிழ்ச்சி அடைகிறேன் நிச்சயமாக இந்தியாவின் மிகவும் அற்றல் வாய்ந்த முதல் வர்களில் ஒருவர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் பிரதர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர்ஸ் I feel really happy to be here today at Mr. Hall and also have the privilege of unveiling the statue of a great son of India, of this great country. When uh, the Chief Minister told me that I should come and unveil this statue, I have no hesitation. to accept it immediately i feel that thiru kalingar karunanadi is one of the able administrator who has given a stable government and also worked for the welfare of the down trodden taking care of the suppressed and oppressed and depressed people and giving social justice to various sections was his speciality i could watch him from my student days i am a neighbor nellore i used to come to chennai and even during my student days also i used to keenly observe the speeches of uh, the great readers of this region even sri chakravarti rajagopalachari ji thiru kamaraj nadar then thiru anadurai even great mg ramachandran and then of course kalingar he is one of the best speakers in the country clarity of vision thought and the way he used to articulate to the people his thoughts his ideas his ideology was really very good at and impressed me in that young age though i had my own political leanings at that time and also had certain differences with the views expressed by dr kalinga but the way he used to put forth his point of view try to convince people has impressed me at this young age i am also privileged to have interaction with him as the party president at that time of course i am no longer in politics i have retired from politics but not tired from public life that's why i am going around the country meeting people greeting people talking with people walking with the people spending time with the people and then i could see a person who has a clear ideology and commitment dedication devotion dynamism and discipline working for the welfare of the people it is the 98th birth anniversary celebration i can say with all honesty he was certainly one of india's most dynamic chief ministers i thank the government of tamil nadu for inviting me to this important event chennai is a city close to my heart and it has a special place in my life from the proximity to nellore where i come from chennai has had a profound influence on me i have had the good fortune of interacting with kalinga karunanidhi ji quite closely over several decades during the course of my long journey in public life it was always interesting to interact with him to argue with him and sometimes we agree we used to agree to disagree also 
but at the same time respect. In democracy, that is a quite essential requirement, agree to disagree. And in public life, politicians, they must respect each other. Political parties should consider that people belong to different parties, have different ideologies, different way of working, but they are all working for the people in their own way. So we must respect each other. We are not enemies. We are only political rivals. This has to be understood by one and all. This is my advice to the modern politicians of belonging to different hues. You may belong to this party or that party, but we all belong to this great country and we are all working in the interest of the people in our own way. So we should respect and we should not treat them as enemies. My dear friends, you were mentioning about the incident where he was arrested along with uh, Thiru Murasori Moran and was not treated well by the police at that time. I have no hesitation in telling the Prime Minister and telling him also, I would like to go and stand by them in this hour of crisis. In spite of our political differences, because we must all respect democracy, respect rule of law. That is very much necessary. He was an astute politician who won every election he contested, won every election he contested, and provided leadership to his party for nearly 50 years. As the Tirukkural says, Saralvalvan Sorvilan Anjan Avanai Ihalvalel Arkum Aridu. Mighty in word of unforgettable mind, of fearless speech, it is hard to conquer such man. He was an able chief minister. He left a lasting legacy of development and social welfare. He was a gifted orator who could hold audience spellbound with his wit, literary flavor, and learned expositions. In public life, there must be some humor along with the grammar. That will add to the grammar. And he had all the three. Humor, grammar. Grammar means subject, not the other <laughs> vacaranum. Knowing the subject, having hold on the subject. And then it will definitely add to the grammar. I did not speak much about grammar. We have so many people here sitting in the audience also, including the superstar. My dear friends, I feel that we must always consider the position as an instrument of public service not to enjoy the fruits of power. Kalingar himself said it. Position is like a crown of thorns. He had an artistic, cultural and journalistic flair that earned him the honorific title of Kalinga after his play, Thukumidai, became a resounding success. He was truly a multifaceted personality who has left an indelible impression on the development canvas of Tamil Nadu. Through his scripts and dialogues, he blazed a new trail in Tamil cinema. As an insightful commentator on current affairs and political analyst, Kalingar wielded a powerful pen, writing extensively in Murasoli, the party's publication he founded. The common stand which runs through the work of Kalingar Karunanidhi, the administrator, the social activist, the political reformer, the script writer, the poet, the playwright, the journalist, and the author is that of a special quality and inclusive development. My dear brothers and sisters, we are quite fortunate that after our independence in 1947, we have had in our country a series of illustrious prime ministers and chief ministers 
who have shaped the development and trajectory of our great nation. They have made tremendous efforts in their own way, in their respective states, union territories, and at the union government level to respond to people's aspirations, design policies, create programs, build institutions. These consist effort, consistent efforts have taken our country forward, guided by the enlightened pathway shown by the constitutional makers. These leaders at various levels have tried to give meaning to the words in our constitution. Bearing few aberrations, they have helped India shape into a vibrant, progressive democracy upholding the vision contained in the preamble of the constitution. Kalingar Karunanidji comes in this list of iconic leaders who had put people at the center of their work. People must be at the center. Whenever you think, whenever you write, whenever you do something, you must have the people at the center. People's welfare. Now India is on the move, undoubtedly. We are now becoming a strong nation. We have a stable government, able leadership, and we have different political parties in our country, ruling different states. But my suggestion is that all of us must work together for the welfare of the people taking care of the downtrodden and taking care of the state. If the states develop, then the country will develop. Country cannot progress without the development of the states. This has to be kept in mind. I also feel that the center and states must work together as Team India. We are Team India and we should all work together forgetting our political differences. Irrespective of caste, creed, sex, religion and region, India is one, one nation, one people, one country. We have different regions. We have different religions. We have different ways of our dress. But at the same time, we must remember we are all Indians. Indians first. That has to be kept in mind, all of us. Every Indian language is very rich. So we must always feel, and I, I feel, that we must promote our mother tongue. Mother, mother tongue, motherland, they are very important. Mother who has given you beautiful birth, you should never forget her. And the native place to which you belongs to, you must do something to the place where you were born. And the mother tongue, the language that has come from mother's womb, the Tamil, the Telugu, the Kannada, the Malayali, Marathi, Assami, Punjabi, Bhojpuri. There are so many languages. We must promote, propagate, and make them prosper in our own way. Because I always feel mother tongue is like your eyesight. The other language is like spectacles. If you have eyesight, spectacles will work. If you don't have eyesight, even if you wear Reban, Zuban se kuch aayega nahi. This has to be kept in mind. My suggestion to all the youngsters is, please promote mother tongue. Speak in mother tongue at home. Leave this mummy-daddy culture. Amma, it comes from the heart. We should promote that mother tongue in our house while talking to others. Of course, we should speak to others when they don't know the mother tongue. We should not be carried away this glamour for the other language. Nothing wrong in learning other languages, but first mother tongue. This has to be kept in mind. I respect Dr. Kalingar because he promoted Tamil, Tamil culture, <laughs> Tamil literature. And every person in public life must do it. Wherever I go, you are talking about my dress. I like the dress, I wear it. When I became vice president, some media people came to me and asked me, sir, now you have become vice president. I said, yes. Then they said, sir, you have become vice president. I said, yes, sir. Tell me what you want. They were hesitating to ask me. I said, come on. They said, sir, what about the dress? I understood. I told them in my own way, no change of dress, only change of address will be there, that's all. <laughs> and wherever I go, even to international conferences, 
I wear this dress. And people appreciate this. Except when the season is not good. You know, weather conditions sometimes force you to wear something. Otherwise, I am comfortable in my dress. And then, that should, I am happy, particularly when I come this side, Tamil people, they keep their dress, their culture, their tradition, the music, the art, the literature, people of Tamil Nadu, they promote, and the governments also propagate it. That's the way forward for all of us. We should not oppose any language, but we must support our language first. So my suggestion is, and people call indigenous controversies, I say, no imposition of any language. No opposition to any language. Imposition and opposition. Learn as many languages as possible. If you want to work on a larger canvas, you need to learn the language spoken by majority of the people. You need to learn even international languages also. But first, you must master your mother tongue. And then you will excel. Each of our states in our country has a vibrant, unique quality. Each of our state is rich in linguistic richness, literary and cultural treasures, excellent architecture, particularly in Tamil Nadu, excellent architecture. The remarkable craftsmanship, I saw the statue. It is live, live. So that's why I appreciated and found out who is the craft person who has crafted this. Scientific and industrial agricultural accomplishments. We as a nation have moved forward and have made perceptible progress by recognizing and celebrating this fascinating diversity and uh, capitalizing on inherent strength. Each one of our Indians, they have something special in them. We have to recognize that and we have to encourage it. We have realized that we can bring about a rare synergy if we tap into the abundant hidden energy that is waiting to be kindled with each of our citizens in each of our state. That's what visionary leaders like Kalinga, Karunanaji has tried to do. His vision was to empower people, especially those who, have, who were marginalized and were outside the circle of development. He was a leader who thought of whatever Sunday. He, he took the welfare of the farmer farmers' markets, a health insurance scheme for the poor. He was a leader who gave boost to industrial growth, infrastructure, and information technology. Infrastructure is key for development. Every government should focus more on infrastructure. We were reminding about Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee, who brought that connectivity revolution, air connectivity, rail connectivity, highway connectivity, tele connectivity, television connectivity, port connectivity, even political connectivity also he brought to the <laughs> He worked with both the parties in Tamil Nadu, DMK as well as ADM. That was the rare quality of a, a leader. He used Karunanaji was one who declared the prayer song of Tamil Nadu in 1970, the Tamil Thai Valtu, with which we began all functions in the state of the national anthem. My dear sisters and brothers, Kalingar Karunanaji was a leader who stood firmly by his political beliefs and conviction. It is important to recall the fact that Kalingar Karunanaji has opposed the imposition of emergency by the, by the then Prime Minister in clear and unambiguous terms. Raising from the margins of society, working untiringly for the underprivileged, and occupying the central stage of public life for several decades, Kalingar Karunanaji's multi-dimensional work has had a lasting impact on the socio-political landscape of Tamil Nadu. Kalingar has left behind an enduring political legacy few leaders can boast of. I am sure that the current Chief Minister, Thiru M.K. Stalin, will be guided by the vision and work of his illustrious father. I once again thank the government of Tamil Nadu for inviting me to this special event and wish 
the Chief Minister Thiru Stalin, his cabinet colleagues and others working all together, and the civil servants working in the state, all the best in their untiring efforts to continue the development journey of the state with the same earnestness as Kalingar did. I'm happy particularly today, this evening, I could see many of my friends who are my colleagues in parliament, present and past also, political friends from different uh, political parties. I would have been more happy if everybody, all political party people were here. That should be the culture. We must respect our leaders, irrespective of political ideologies and all. We, as I was telling, we must differ, but at the same time, we must respect the leaders and then move on according to our ideologies. My dear friends, that is what is real India, unity in diversity. That is the speciality of this country. Unity in public life for the welfare of the people. Leaving aside our politics for the time being. Need not compromise on your convictions, but at the same time can work together also. This is my advice to all the youngsters. Once again, I'm thankful to Tamil Nadu government for providing me this opportunity. And also, I would like to thank all of you for giving me very patient hearing. Thank you very much. Nandri, Wanakam.